In 2017, Hasbro released their Star Wars The Last Jedi action figures with a new gimmick called Force Link. You wear this device on your wrist and a receiver in it picks up audio clips from The Last Jedi action figures. How does it do that? Somewhere inside these figures is a microchip. In this video, I am going to tear a Last Jedi figure apart and find it. Before we go into The Last Jedi and Force Link, we're first going to go back to 1999 with Hasbro's first attempt at a similar device called a ComTech Reader. And then I'm going to tear one of them apart too. This is a ComTech chip. The letters stand for Communication Output Memory Module. It looks like a dog tag. It has a microchip inside it. It also doubles for a figure stand with a foot peg on it. This is a ComTech Reader. When you place the figure stand on it, it reads the audio clips out of it and plays them. You're a funny little boy. How do you know so much? These junk dealers must have a weakness of some kind. I've been trained in defense. I can take care of myself. You're a funny little boy. How do you know so much? You can clearly see the microchip inside the clear plastic figure stand. I have 12 Phantom Menace action figures on card. I'm not even going to open them. We're going to play the first sound of each one right in the package. You're a funny little boy. How do you know so much? Feel. Don't think. Use your instincts. Halt. You're under arrest. Enemy fighter, straight ahead. You see, Your Majesty, they will elect a new chancellor. I'm a person and my name is Anakin. Use of your taken, use of greater than the Bungans. George, but get your feet up, Mr. Skywalker. Bungans no like the outsiders. There is more to this conflict than meets the eye. The donkey Skywalker, rocked up a human in Guilta. The bull over there is going to win, I think. I have two loose Addy Gallia ComTech chips and one on a card, so we're going to tear apart one of these duplicates to get the microchip out. The Sith should not be ignored. The power of the dark side is growing, I fear. There is more to this conflict than meets the eye. Now let's play just the microchip on the ComTech reader. There is more to this conflict than meets the eye. Hasbro overproduced the Episode 1 Phantom Menace toys, so there may be more of these figures than Episode 2 or 3 figures. The 1999 ComTech reader is designed to look like the communications radio that was in the movie. It's the same design as this Phantom Menace walkie-talkie, this hollow plastic role-playing toy, and this little communications radio that you can see on this Obi-Wan Kenobi action figure. The original prop that was used in the movie was built using a woman's razor. So yeah, little kids can talk to their friends using a woman's razor walkie-talkie. Did you think that one through, George? The ComTech gimmick was only in the 1999 Episode 1 figures and some regular Star Wars figures produced around the same time. Then it died out and was gone for Episodes 2 and 3. Nearly 20 years later, in 2017, Hasbro came back to the idea with what they now call Force Link. The bulky ComTech reader became a much smaller thing you wear on your wrist. And these ComTech chips were eliminated with the microchip now hidden somewhere inside the figure, built inside the figure during the manufacturing of it. Let's play these without opening them. As soon as the device gets near the figure, it automatically says the first line. Show me again the power of the darkness. We shall destroy the resistance. I feel the power of the force. I'm Poe! Poe Dameron! Orders received. Heaven's been up in charge. Rebellions are built on hope. I can fix anything. To get the link to play the second and third line, you need to hit the link, suggesting there's a spring or mercury switch somewhere inside it. Rebellions are built on hope. 
Okay, on my lead. The squad is headed your way. Okay, on my lead. The squad is headed your way. If you make a sudden jerk with the force link, it triggers battle sounds. On most figures, this is a gun blaster. On some figures, it's the lightsaber sound. While it's playing the battle sounds, if you hit the force link again, you get new lines of dialogue spoken about the battle. We can fight this. We can stop them. We can fight this. We can stop them. Okay, on my lead. The squad is headed your way. This is a boxed set of the character Balatic and a monster called a Raptar. You can play Balatic through the window. You're a dead man. The box said the Raptar also made sounds, so I moved the force link around the still sealed box until I found it. He's on the bottom of the box on the opposite side of where the figure is. I have the BB-8 playset. The box has been opened, so I have access to the two figures included. There's been an awakening. Unfortunately, the guard does not talk. He only makes battle sounds. There's been an awakening. Somewhere inside these 2017 Last Jedi figures is a microchip similar to the chip that was used inside the Comtech figure stands. I do not know where the chip is, what size it is, or how it was assembled inside the figure. I do not know if it's glued in or held in place with plastic pegs through a hole in the chip, or if it will fall out as soon as you open the figure. I need to be able to show you the chip clearly. If I were to bust open one of the figures made from black plastic, it might be hard to see the chip because I don't know what color the chip is. So I am going to use the figure of Rose, which is made of a lighter colored plastic, sort of a mustard yellow, so the chip should be easy to see. And I have a duplicate of Rose. And let's hope the chip is waterproof because I am going to use hot water to pop off the legs, head, and arms to start with. I have now already torn the figure apart and this absolutely did not go the way I wanted it to. I wanted to pop off the arms, the legs, and the head and then use a screwdriver or a knife in the empty socket holes to pop apart the front and back half of the body. The head popped off even without the hot water. The belt came off too. I admit the water was not boiling hot and I did not leave the figure in long enough.
The hot water made the arms and legs flexible, but when I tried to stick a screwdriver in it to try to pop the arm peg out of the socket, it just ended up tearing the peg off the arm. The same thing started happening to the leg. I just ended up tearing the arm and the leg completely off. With the arm and leg peg now stuck in the socket, I didn't have a hole to stick the screwdriver in. I also did not take into account the hood glued on the figure. I didn't really see any important reason why they made the hood a separate piece and glued it on. They could have just molded it as part of the regular body. She didn't really need the separate belt that was glued on either. They only did that so the belt would have a soft plastic peg hole to put the engineering device into it using its own peg. But the engineering device is so small and the peg on it was so soft it was really difficult to put it on anyway. Plus it doesn't say on the package that it fits on it anyway. I found it myself. The picture on the back shows it on the belt, but the picture on the front shows her holding it, although you can see the holster on the belt open for it. With the hood and the belt molded as two unnecessary separate pieces that had to be permanently manufactured together, I wished Hasbro would have just molded them as part of the body and used that wasted material to give me a third accessory instead, or even lower the price of the figure. I just ended up going back and forth between a knife and two screwdrivers to try to pop the body in half. That didn't happen either. In the process of wedging the screwdriver into the upper shoulders, I was hitting something black. I thought it was some kind of black rubber sleeve that sealed the electronic chip inside it to prevent it from getting wet, because I thought Hasbro would have realized that kids play with their action figures in water. But Hasbro didn't. It was just a holder for the exposed chip. I thought they would have placed the chip in the middle of the body away from the peg joints, but I was wrong. They had placed the chip in the upper body between the two shoulder pegs. I did not know it was there, and the process of me sticking the screwdriver in the upper shoulders to try to pry the figure apart caused me to repeatedly scrape the screwdriver against the exposed chip, tearing off the microcircuitry lines. I had now just destroyed the chip and made it unplayable without realizing it. I couldn't pop the body in half and this was a hard angle to get to because of the camera. I ended up having to bend and then break the top half of the back of the body. That's when I finally saw the chip. I had hoped I would have a playable chip and a figure that I could try to reassemble. Instead I have a destroyed chip and a destroyed figure. The good parts of the figure that are left are the head, one arm, the belt, two accessories, and one good leg if I bust apart the rest of the body to get to it. Maybe I can save the other arm and the other leg by using a screw as a joint. The body halves will not go back together too well because of the twisted plastic. But the figure only cost me three dollars and we now know what the chip looks like and where it's located. It's in the upper body between the shoulders, held in place with a black rubber frame. I also assumed that the chip would have been smaller than the 1999 Comtech chips, but for 18 years apart, they're about exactly the same size. Just so you know, the Comtech chips and the Forcelink figures are not interchangeable. The 1999 Comtech reader won't play the more modern Forcelink figures, and the Forcelink device won't play the 1999 Comtech chips. I've been trained in defense. I can take care of myself. I can fix anything. In the process of filming this, I discovered that the Force Link reader is sending off a signal more powerful than the Comtech reader. A signal searching to try to read any chips in the area. You're a funny little boy. How do you know so much? With the Force Link next to the Comtech reader, the Comtech reader won't read the Comtech chips. These junk dealers must have a weakness of some kind. I've been trained in defense. I can take care of myself. When I move the force link device away from the Comtech reader, it clears the air for the Comtech reader to then pick up the Comtech chip and reads it again. You're a funny little boy. How do you know so much? I can fix anything. Can you fix that? We have a mission to complete. You can't give up on the resistance. Blast 
Well, there you have it. You now know what the Force Link chips looked like sealed inside the figures. So what are you going to do with that information? Because I don't know.